With postpartum thyroiditis, postpartum means after birth. Thyroid refers to the thyroid gland, and itis means inflammation. So postpartum thyroiditis is an inflammation of the thyroid gland that women experience after giving birth. Now, normally, the hypothalamus, which is at the base of the brain, secretes thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH, into the hypophysial portal system, which is a network of capillaries linking the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary then releases thyroid-stimulating hormone, aka thyrotropin, or just TSH. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland, which is a gland found in the neck that looks like two thumbs hooked together in the shape of a V. If we zoom into the thyroid gland, we'll find thousands of follicles, which have a sticky substance called colloid, which sits within follicular cells. Follicular cells convert the protein thyroglobulin into two iodine-containing hormones, triiodothyronine, or T3, and thyroxine, or T4. Once released from the thyroid gland, these hormones enter the blood and the majority is bound to circulating plasma proteins, with only a small amount of T3 and T4 traveling unbound in the blood. Ultimately, these two hormones get picked up by nearly every cell in the body. And once inside the cell, T4 is mostly converted to T3, at which point it can exert its effect. T3 speeds up the basal metabolic rate. So as an example, they might produce more proteins and burn up more energy in the form of sugars and fats. It's like the cells are kind of in a frenzy. T3 increases cardiac output, stimulates bone resorption, which thins out the bones, and activates the sympathetic nervous system, which is a part of the nervous system responsible for our fight-or-flight response. Thyroid hormone is important, and the occasional increase is like getting a boost to fight off a hungry predator, or to stay warm during a snowstorm, or both. Thyroid hormones are also involved in a number of other things, like controlling sebaceous and sweat gland secretion, hair follicle growth, and regulating proteins and mucopolysaccharide synthesis by skin fibroblasts. And for all this to work right, the levels of thyroid hormones have to stay within a normal range. To do that, the body uses negative feedback, which means that low levels of thyroid hormones tell the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to increase their secretion of TRH and TSH, respectively. More TRH increases TSH production in the pituitary, and the thyroid gland gets more stimulation to make thyroid hormones, and eventually T3 and T4 levels go back up to the normal range again. In postpartum thyroiditis, a woman typically has a pre-existing autoimmune thyroiditis, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but it's usually pretty mild, so they might not have any symptoms. When she gets pregnant, though, there are a lot of physiologic changes, and one of them is to dampen the immune response, probably to stop the immune system from reacting to the presence of a baby that makes new proteins because of the father's DNA. Then after birth, the immune system returns to its normal level of activity, and that change can sometimes aggravate the pre-existing autoimmune thyroiditis. Ultimately, the reason our immune system might attack the thyroid is molecular mimicry, where thyroid cell antigens look so similar to antigens of foreign invaders, like viruses, the immune cells actually confuse the two. Anytime this happens, the body's cells earn the name of autoantigens. When it happens, the autoantigens, in this case from the thyroid cells, get picked up by antigen-presenting cells and delivered to a nearby lymph node, activating CD4-positive T helper cells. T helper cells stimulate the B cells in the lymph node to start proliferating and differentiate into plasma cells which are able to produce specific autoantibodies against these autoantigens, like thyroid peroxidase, thyroglobulin, and TSH receptors. These autoantibodies bind to and block those targets, preventing normal function of the thyroid. In addition, they act like a tag on the follicular cells that have these autoantigens, so that they can be targeted and destroyed by natural killer cells. Meanwhile, CD4-positive T helper cells produce inflammatory cytokines, like interferon gamma, which attract macrophages into the thyroid gland, which go on to cause damage to the follicles. These cytokines also attract another type of T lymphocytes, called CD8-positive cytotoxic T cells. CD8-positive cytotoxic T cells directly target and destroy thyroid follicular cells. Now, initially, the destruction of these follicular cells leads to T3 and T4 getting spilled out into the blood 
creating a transient hyperthyroid or thyrotoxic state. But as the thyroid gland gets more and more damaged, the colloid gets depleted over time, and follicles atrophy, or get smaller. This leads to decreased T3 and T4, and cause hypothyroidism. In any case though, all this inflammation also causes connective tissue to build up, leaving less space for the functional thyroid cells. In most people with postpartum thyroiditis, the thyroid normally recovers within a year of giving birth. But in some unlucky mothers who experience the hypothyroid stage, the thyroid never recovers, leaving them with a chronic case of hypothyroidism. Postpartum thyroiditis usually causes a painless goiter, which is an enlarged thyroid gland. Initially, destruction of the thyroid cells release thyroid hormone, and causes hyperthyroidism. In that phase, the body has an increased metabolism, which can cause weight loss, palpitations, tremors, anxiety, or heat intolerance. Typically, this will start off a few months after delivery, and last up to eight weeks. Then there's the hypothyroidism phase, where the body has a decreased metabolism, which can cause a lack of energy, constipation, dry skin, or cold intolerance. Typically, this can last up to six months. The diagnosis of postpartum thyroiditis can be confirmed with thyroid function tests to establish whether someone is in the hyperthyroid or hypothyroid phase, and can be confirmed by looking for anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Most of the time, postpartum thyroiditis doesn't require treatment, but sometimes beta blockers like propranolol can help with symptoms like palpitations and tremors. And in hypothyroidism, thyroid hormone replacement can help as well. All right, as a quick recap, postpartum thyroiditis is an inflammation of the thyroid gland that happens in a woman a few months after she's given birth. It's often due to an aggravation of a pre-existing autoimmune thyroiditis. Initially, damage to the thyroid gland can result in hyperthyroidism, but later on, the loss of healthy thyroid tissue can result in hypothyroidism. In most cases, thyroid activity returns to normal after about a year. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.